off they race. Qan came flush out in front. Crumlin' Gal is winding up on the extreme outside pretty well. qan has got a split in the center if good enough. And driving through now, Qan coming out in front. Fiery and Gorgeous joined by Qan. Out wide, Crumlin' Gal. Qan and Crumlin' Gal go on. Crumlin' Gal on the outside with a real momentum burst at the wire. And another one for the Mike Doyle Barn, a newcomer, Crumlin' Gal. Beating home Qan, Fiery and Gorgeous, and then Madame Bovary. 1-12-30. And they're off and a very good start. Going for the lead is Blesnia. At their girth, Crumlin Gal. And Crumlin Gal on the outside. Might be the longest shot on the board, but is going the best. Crumlin Gal gradually getting the lead. Maritime connection in second. And it is Crumlin Gal in front. And David Moran comes away to win with Crumlin Gal by a length and a half. Truly honor getting up to run second. Thanks, Congratulations. Thank you so much. Many more to come. I started looking for a project horse in March of 2020. Maeve's ad came along and I knew right away that I loved her. She had great confirmation, a really great brain, and good movement. I bought her sight unseen off of a few videos of her trotting and cantering around under saddle, but I knew she was very green and only had less than 10 rides on her since the track. I decided to bring her to a barn near me where I could ride in an indoor arena while my arena at home was still very frozen and snowy from the cold Canadian winter. Here's her first time trotting around. She'd arrived at the barn maybe 20 minutes ago, and so she was quite wired and excited from her long drive. This was the next day. It was my first ride on her. As you can see, she's very green and consistent in the contact and just constantly changing pace, but honestly, she was very well behaved for a four-year-old. I was very, very impressed with her. She definitely had some silly moments at the beginning and had some bucks and rears, but I didn't even know if I'd be able to canter her on this day. In the end, we got a short little canter both directions, which I was very, very pleased about. Her canter was definitely her weakest gait and it took the longest to develop over time, but you'll see that throughout the video. And then here is her about a week later. She's obviously relaxed a lot and was a much more pleasant ride at this point. She had stopped um, being silly at the beginning of the rides and just really focused during the rides, which was really, really nice to feel. She was also just more relaxed and wasn't really as tense through the body, which was great. We stayed on a circle a lot just to really help with her bending as she could be a bit stiff. And then I would walk and trot over poles. This was great to get her mind moving. And because I knew I wanted to jump her eventually, it was good for her just to be aware of what poles were like under her legs. And she took it all in stride. She was great. This is about a week after that. So we started doing some more shoulder in. Obviously it's at a very, very green point at this point. Sometimes it got her a bit stressed and she'd get a bit worked up as you can see in these clips. She's shaking her head and she would do this weird thing where she'd throw up her hoof, but I would just keep asking for it and then praise her really well when she did do what I wanted. I would also just allow her to move forward off my leg after she did what I wanted so we continuously had forward movement as opposed to getting sticky feet like some babies can get. I also continued to incorporate pulls so that she could feel more confident and have something to do. But if she would ever get a bit forward after poles, I would always stop her and back her up. And this made sure that she knew that poles were not something that should get her very excited or hot. And they're just a relaxing thing.
So this is one of my favorite exercises we did. We would do a 10 meter circle to establish the correct bend. And then when I got back to the rail, I'd ask for a shoulder in. As you can see, it's a very baby shoulder in and it's just at the beginning stages. But this would really help with her bend as well as help her sit back on her haunches through the transition into the trot. I really liked this and it was really helpful in the beginning. So I really would suggest doing that with some young horses who are learning their shoulder in. I would also still incorporate lots of trot rails, like I've said a couple times, and then I would also usually um, back up after them. Her backup was really bad. It was always very crooked and tense, so we worked on this a lot. I also started doing walk to canters. I didn't do walk to canters because I thought we were more advanced than we were or because I thought she was some amazing dressage horse. I did it because um, they really help with a horse who struggles in the transition sometimes to help figure out their feet, as well as you can do the shoulder in to canter, which really helps with a horse who struggles with their lead. Of course, I wouldn't suggest this for all horses. It was just something that worked well for Maeve. And as you can see, her canter is improve has improved a little tiny bit, but really it's still quite tense. And she really struggles with um, dropping in her inside shoulder. She's pretty much running with her body sideways and she has absolutely no bend through her body, especially her rib cage. So it was just a very difficult canter to ride. You can kind of see me struggling a bit. It was really, really awkward, um, hard to sit, hard to control. Um, and then she was also kind of learning how to relax in the trot and stretch down. This was also just kind of hard for her as it is for most horses to learn. Um, because they really have to learn how to engage their body first. But here you can see her offering a little bit of stretch and relaxation, which was really nice to feel. And then here's her having a fun play in the indoor arena after a groundwork session. Another important thing to note is just that I did do a lot of groundwork in between this. I just didn't film any of it, unfortunately. I wasn't really thinking. So yeah, here's her awesome trot. She's got really cool movement when she tries. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's another thing is I just did a lot of groundwork in between to help our relationship and um, work on things from the ground as well. So at this point, her canter had developed a little bit. You could see it's a little bit stronger. She has a little bit more collection and she can kind of sit up on her haunches a little bit more, but really just little differences. It's not a massive improvement yet. So what I decided to do was just kind of keep her on a 20 meter circle. And what I realized is she really just didn't have a uh, very good awareness of her body at the canter. So I just kind of wanted her to learn how to hold the canter herself and balance herself as opposed to me always micromanaging her. Here she got a bit rushed and excited through the transition. So I did a 20 meter circle before trying again. Again, she kind of raced through the transition, but it wasn't anything crazy. So then I cantered down the long side before going into a 20 meter circle again. I want to just keep a loose rein, like I said, just kind of allowing her to figure out her body a little bit more. And this is when we really had some more breakthrough with the relaxation in the canter. You can't really tell, but it was just a much different feel to ride. In the downwards transition, I tried to, I tried to use my voice and my seat a lot as opposed to touching her mouth because she was quite sensitive in the mouth and would react a lot. So I just really tried to use other aids. This is also when her really sweet personality started to come out. Um, especially with the groundwork, she just really was a pleasure to work with on the ground and she was becoming such a puppy dog to deal with. Mm -hmm. I also at this point decided to have my first bridalist ride with her. She was so good and honestly so well behaved. I couldn't have asked for a better first bridalist ride. She was really listening and let me do walk trot canter on her um, and was just very chill. You can also see in the middle of the arena, I have some raised trot poles set up. That was another thing I did a lot. I did a lot of raised trot poles to help her develop some top line um, under saddle and just really learn how to engage her body. And then also you'll see that I did a lot of leg yielding on the, just like at a standstill. So I did a lot of turn on the forehand um, and I was really happy with her doing a bridal list today because this was something she really found very, very difficult at first, but we were at the point where we could do a bridal list. Which so even though my arenas weren't quite, quite ready to be ridden in yet, because of COVID-19, I had to bring my horses home. I was very grateful that I was actually able to have somewhere to bring my horses because I know most people just had to completely stop riding when COVID hit. So I'm very grateful that I was able to do with this. As you can see, they loved the miniature. They were very excited to be in here. 
I also started doing a lot more trail riding with Maeve. This was really good for her to be able to figure out her feet, as well as I discovered her insane love for water. She literally loves splashing in water so much. But it was so good for her confidence and just learning about where to put her hooves and little things like that. At this point, I also entered my first online dressage show. This was such a good learning experience for both of us. I'm fairly new to showing dressage, so it was great for me to learn from a professional coach about what I could do differently to better pre prepare Maeve and I for the real world of showing, which at this point I still thought was a possibility, but I quickly discovered with COVID there was going to be no show season. <laughs> So as you can see, she's still really quite tense. I hadn't really started asking for contact yet, so she just was occasionally coming into it, but not necessarily on purpose. And I also decided to ride her bareback for the first time. So this was um, her very first time bareback, obviously, and she was really good. She was not particularly impressed with it. As you can see, her canter is improving and she's stretching a little bit more at the canter, which was very, very nice to feel. It was great for her to start to learn some confidence in her canter and just be able to hold um, herself in a way more balanced position. Of course, she still was very unbalanced and it was very hard to ride, but it was improving more and more every day. So that was really good to feel. So obviously there was a lot of improvement and I also did a lot of silly things like slide off her backwards and stuff and just kind of test her um, personality, which she obviously had a very, very good one. And then here's her improvement under saddle. So still doing some walk to canters as well as trot to canter transitions. Um, you can see she's starting to relax a bit more. Again, just inside leg, some outside rein, but really mostly just letting her have her head and figure out her body and staying on this 20 meter circle. So you can see she can hold the stretch for a couple strides now. So when she could, would give me a couple really good strides, I would ask for her to come back into the trot, um, mostly using my seat. Here she gets the wrong lead, so I just bring her back softly before asking for the correct lead. And then when she gets the correct lead, I give her a big reward. Again, just kind of sitting back, letting her figure out her body. I feel like this is really important um, just not to really micromanage every stride of your horse, but let them gain muscle and figure themselves out themselves. This is something that Maeve really taught me, especially with her canter, because it was particularly unbalanced. She also just continued to prove how amazing her personality was. She just loves snuggles and she loves being groomed, which is really great. Here's a kind of random angle just showing you how well her stretching had come along. She could hold it for laps at a time at this point. And the winter woolies were finally starting to come out, which was amazing. Uh, this was my first time jumping her. I have a full video on this, so go check that out if you want to see more from this time, where I talk more about jumping a young horse. It wasn't very eventful. She was very good, very brave. Um, at first, she did not understand that I was not just asking her for a raised trot pole. As you can see here, she just doesn't really understand what's happening. But then after a couple times, I cantered her over the cross rail and she finally gave it a bit more of a jump, which was great because that was exactly what I wanted. And then here's just kind of her development throughout the ride. So there's her trotting in and finally giving an actual really nice jump over that, as well as um, you can see the improvement in her canter and then her um, being really confident over that jump. She was a really good girl for this day. I was very proud of her. I also free jumped her um, just once, just to kind of see what her jump was like. And right away I could see she had a bit of a flat jump, so that was something I really targeted when I started jumping with her. Um, here's her failing over some walking poles. I did lots of walking poles with her throughout her training. I think they're very, very helpful in developing a horse. Um, here's her figuring it out a bit more and not tripping over them. This is a dressage ride where I started, started to feel a very big difference with her. I started doing a new thing where when she would kind of get tense or pull against my hands, I would just stop her and back her up immediately. And I started to notice a really big difference. She really started to understand what I was asking for. And when I would put the rein on, she started to kind of sit up more on her haunches as opposed to fall into my hands. So you can see a really big difference of her going around. She's willing to stretch properly now and sit back as opposed to just kind of running forward and down. Um, so it was just, it was really, really good to feel at this point. Her canter also improved a lot. Her transitions were still iffy, but in the canter, she was much more relaxed, um, just going really smoothly and really nicely. I also had bought a new dressage saddle at this point because mine was 
um, just a Wintec, so it wasn't really supporting me the way I wanted it to. And this saddle made a really big difference. I also did canter to halts, and this was really, really good for her, um, for her downwards transitions, because she started to learn how to sit back and really use her bum in the downwards transitions. So this was her first time jumping through a more complicated grid. This was only her third or fourth time jumping, I can't really remember. Um, but she was doing so well, she was so confident through this. I remember it really felt like something clicked in her brain and she started to really understand what jumping was, if that makes sense. Um, like I said, her jump was naturally a bit flat, so it was really something I had to target to um, teach her how to really round herself and be scopy over jumps. She was still proving just how brave she was and how nothing really scared her um and then we started to do a, a couple courses here and there and she was starting to jump really well you can also just see the difference in her canter she just has this really nice floaty canter at this point and it's just like yeah just much nicer to watch um and I was still doing simple lead changes because she I obviously at this point she was still very green in the canter I wasn't about to start schooling flying lead changes um down this line she really rushes and it's just kind of an example of how she'd get pretty hot when she was jumping so I checked her pretty hard here and asked her to really wait for me and then she was really patient to this last fence which felt really good she could be a bit of a hotter jumper um, I kind of always knew that so I just had to work on relaxation while we were jumping and then this last course I did this day was kind of the best I'd ever felt her um, so it was really nice to feel she was just really smooth around the course. Um, her canter, as you can see, there's just so much improvement in her canter. And she was just finally feeling really fun to ride as opposed to really green and awkward. So that was really fun. This was my first time jumping bridalist with her, so she was just showing how much she loves to stretch. She really started to figure out how comfortable it is to use her body properly. And then this was my very first time ever going over fence bridalist. She's still very wiggly, but she was super easy, super quiet and calm. Um, we had a couple silly moments, but overall I was just very, very proud of her. Um, she can be a bit hot, and so it takes a lot of um, self-control for a hot horse to listen to you when they're bridalist and she really proved um, that she could be very very well behaved and listen very well even bridalist. This is our second ever dressage test or online horse show. And as you can see, there's a massive improvement. I did a whole side-by-side -side comparison. A lot of the improvement was actually more from like what I could feel as opposed to what you can see. But honestly, there was just such a big difference in the way she felt. I was very proud of her at this point because she was starting to really be a pleasure to ride and um, be much more relaxed and calm and just really starting to understand contact. So that was really nice to feel. I also decided to take her swimming for the first time. Um, she loved it. She just splashed the whole time. I had my sister riding Tulips, so that was really fun for her, for me, because she was just able to follow her best friend, Tulip, which was really great. She is just a seahorse. She loves it. 
Um, she tried to leap through the water sometimes as opposed to swim. Like you can see Tulip, look, Tulip's just like nicely swimming. And then Mae started and she started to try to leap through the water. So it was a bit exciting to ride, but she was really good. She was very brave. Most horses don't actually swim on their first time, but she did. I also went off property schooling with her. Again, a full vlog is dedicated to that, so go check out that vlog to see more footage. But she was very, very well behaved and just really great. She was a bit hot, as you can see, um, and just a bit excited, but the footing wasn't very good, so it was not exactly how I wanted the school to go, but she was really good considering the circumstances. Just really relaxed, and we still did a lot of halting after fences. I showed this clip because it was a big deal that after jumping um, a little tiny course type of thing, she was able just to halt and then walk away on a loose rein. That was a big accomplishment for her. She couldn't do that before because she got so excited. Here's me whistling them and then this in the morning, um, she's just so friendly. She would come the minute she was called. She was so happy. Uh, and then here's me jumping another grid. This one is again really trying to target her shape over fences. She would get a bit wiggly sometimes going into grids. Um, but I could really feel her form improving over fences and it was starting to feel so much nicer to jump. So this kind of brings us to the end. I don't want to say it's actually the end because of course she's not a finished horse. She's only four years old, so she is by no means finished her training. But this was the point I decided to put her up for sale. This was the video I used in my sales ad because she just felt really, really good at this point. I felt like anyone could really ride her. She was so soft and supple, so simple to ride. And I just really felt good about sending her on to her next person. As you can see, she still loves to stretch. She's just really soft in the contact. Um, I think a really big thing that helped develop her trot and canter was hill work. We did a ton of hill work, especially in the last couple months. Um, we spent a lot of time just walking and trotting up um, hills to really help her build hind end muscles. As you can see, her transitions have really improved. And then at the canter, she's just really collected. She's really up off her forehand. She's engaging her hind end properly. She um, has a correct inside bend. And she's just really soft in the contact. Of course, there's so much more, but that's just the, the simple part. Um, and then she started to have a lead change. It's not correct and it's not finished, but um, I just kind of threw it in this video just to show the starts of a lead change for her. Um, she doesn't really have any obvious weaknesses either direction anymore either. Um, she can still get a little bit excited during the downwards transitions, but overall she's just, she's just such a pleasure to ride. I honestly love riding this mare. Um, she's just become so simple and just kind. Like she always tries so hard. That's one thing that I've um, really loved about Maeve is even when she's been confused or she hasn't had the muscle or just hasn't really understood um, what we're doing. She just tries so, so hard to figure out what I'm asking, which is something you can't train in a horse. It's just the way she is. And, I and then finally, one of my last jump schools on her. Unfortunately, this isn't actually my last jump school on her because I don't usually have someone to film me, but this is just the one I used in her sales ad. This was a really big fail on my part. <laughs> I jumped in so big. I forgot how to ride apparently and she took a one stride as a bounce, but it goes to show you how brave she is. I just thought I'd include that in this video because I so rarely have fails of her because she's just, I don't know, I just don't really have any of her. I've never fallen off her or anything. Um, but yes, she is just so much fun to jump now. She's so scopey. She jumps so round over every jump and she's just so brave and fun to ride. I'm honestly going to miss her so much. Like she's my favorite horse I've ever bought and sold as a resale project because she's just tried so hard for me and has such a phenomenal personality. But I'm very, very excited for her because she has found a phenomenal home and it's just going to be loved so much. And I'm really excited to see her out on the show circuits in the summer because um, I know she's just going to clean up. I'm going to lose to her probably because she's so amazing. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this transformation of this phenomenal little mare. Um, I'll put more details about her in the description box if you're curious because I know I didn't cover everything in this video despite it being very long. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye!